on on Bia France, please. Uh, in a practical language, the maltreatment given out to the Bia France is purely inhuman. Nigerian government in all her entity wants nothing but total elimination of the people of Biafra. Yes. And we want to state it categorically clear that we Biafrans we will not be extinguished. And that is what we are demanding for our freedom. We have no we have committed no wrong, no no crime to demand for our freedom. Okay, sir, what do you have to say concerning the Sharia law they want to use on our leader Namdikano? Purely it is impractical. First and foremost, Nigeria isn't officially declared as an Islamic nation. If they will come out now and say that Nigeria is today officially declared as an Islamic nation and therefore will be governed and ruled by Islamic laws and rule, then we will know that we are Islamic nation. And that is one of the reasons why we, dear friends, are here demanding for our freedom. Secondly, they say that they want to judge Namdekano with Sharia. First and foremost, Namdekano is not a Muslim, Muslim. and will never be a Muslim. So I think they are only joking. Okay, sir. So what do you have to tell other clergy, other pastors and reverend in Biafra land and the worldwide concerning how you want them to support the Biafra restoration? What do you Let have to me tell make them? it clear. In every revolution, in every struggle for freedom, the truth remains this. Ministers, priests are always in the forefront. Let's go back to South Africa. We have somebody like Bishop, Bishop Desmond Tutu who stood to fight alongside with Mandela. And back in America, we have Martin Luther King, who is also a priest. Back there in America, we have Reverend Jesse Jackson, who is also a priest. So I see no reason why our Vietnam priests find it very difficult to sit back at home, you know, waiting for Biafra to come. And I want to make it clear to them, Biafra will come but it will be a shame because God has committed the, the, the nation of Biafra into the hands of ministers to bring it out. But whether they sit back at home waiting for Biafra to come, God will bring it. There is a statement, you know, uh, Mordecai told Esther. He said, maybe for this purpose did God bring you into the palace. So for this purpose, God chose these ministers to fight and stand against injustice. And whereby they refuse to stand against injustice, make it on their people. God will raise, God will raise stones that will fight. But it will be a shame that I have decided I will not, you know, be shamed. I will be alive, I'm alive, and while stones rise to fight for me, I better fight for my freedom. If it means my blood being split for this freedom to be, I'd rather die than to live a slave in this country called Nigeria. I can never, I can never, I can never, I want to repeat, I can never remain a Nigerian. Let me say something, please. In some of my journeys, do you know when you get to some borders, you find it difficult to say you are a Nigerian, because once you say you are a Nigerian, you will be sat like a criminal. Yes. Like a criminal. But, to my greatest surprise, a Ghanaian will come and I'm a Ghanaian, so we just walk past. Hey. All West Africa, all African countries will come and walk past. But then you say you are a Nigerian, sorry for you. You will be treated as a criminal. I want to say it, I can never be identified as a criminal. God bless you.